My name is Dylan Wainwright, and I'm a researcher at both the University of California, Davis, and at Yale University. And I'm a marine biologist and also an evolutionary biologist. And I'm particularly interested in understanding how the form of organisms is related to function and performance of those organisms. A lot of my specific research is on fish surfaces. So fishes are like the most diverse group of vertebrates on our planet. There are more species or kinds of fishes than birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians all put together. And so fish comes, come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And one part of this diversity is diversity in their surfaces. So fish surfaces are made of things like hard, bony, overlapping scales, right? That come also in a very big variety of shapes and sizes. And my research really explores what scales and fish surfaces look like and tries to understand why we see so many different kinds of scales. Some have spines, some have bumps, some are really little, some are really big. Some fish don't even have scales. So thinking about why functionally fish would have so many different kinds of scales. And this is important for just understand the basic biology of fish and fish surfaces. Uh, fish surfaces protect them, right, from predators, parasites, disease. They also house these really crucial sensory systems. Fish sort of taste things and touch things and can feel water movement through their surfaces. So I also do a lot of work to think about how if fish surfaces might make fishes swim more efficiently through the water, reducing their drag, kind of like how the dimples on a golf ball reduce golf ball drag and allow golf balls to fly farther. Maybe something similar is going on in fishes. And I use gel site technologies in part to make this happen. SEM and histology really only image and measure things in two dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world. So not understanding that full 3D topography of biological surfaces really limits our ability to accurately understand diversity of life on Earth and prevents us from making hypotheses about function of different surfaces because function is definitely happening in three dimensions. And so these limitations have really prevented us from being able to study the surfaces of fishes and other organisms in this kind of holistic and appropriate way. Gel site solves these problems. Being able to see all the features of fish scales represented in 3D. The diversity of fish scales never ceases to amaze me. And just being able to see the topography of fish surfaces in 3D has really let me lead my field into unknown territory, uh, allowing me to kind of spark a number of discoveries about what fish surfaces look like and also how they work. In particular, one cool recent discovery that uh, myself and some collaborators made was that a lot of sharks have many missing scales all over their surfaces. We discovered this using gel site, and we realized uh, that these missing scales were locations where new scales were actually growing in. So sharks are continuously losing and then replacing their scales. So scales of fishes have a lot of small features, things like little tiny spines or sometimes big spines and also small ridges. And scientists have thought for decades that these little tiny features might help reduce drag or help fish swim more efficiently in water. But I thought, what if mucus just covers all these small features? Gel site, to my knowledge, is the only method and technology that can image a soft, clear material like mucus. So this project really wouldn't have been possible without gel site technology. So we image the surfaces of live fishes using a gel site handheld imaging system. And we found that mucus has a pretty wide range of effects on different fishes. So in some species, the scales are so rough that mucus has very little effect on those surfaces. But in other species, the mucus layer is really thick and the scales are small enough that with mucus on those surfaces, you can't even tell that there's scales there anymore. With gel site, I've been able to ask questions that nobody has been able to answer or ask previously, which leads to discoveries in my field. And since I've started publishing papers and giving talks about my work with gel site to my broader field, I've now started to see and work with a number of collaborators who are using this method. 
it's also really transforming my field and allowing everyone in my field to start to look at biological surfaces in new and really profound ways. Image and quantify the surfaces of a few thousand fish species. A study like this will let us understand what the major patterns are in fish surface evolution and diversity. For example, maybe something like scale shape is a really important axis of diversity and something we see a lot of change in, or perhaps something like surface roughness or the presence and size of spines on scales. And using this kind of information, we can then take those things and ask other questions like, are fishes that are more athletic and swimming in open water and swimming a lot, do they have different surfaces compared to fishes that are mostly sitting on the bottom? So these sorts of questions let us understand diversity in form, but also connect it to potential diversity in function and performance, really allowing us to understand the evolution and diversity of life on our planet. 